Well, praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. I want to bring greetings to everyone. We thank God for you. Amen. As you see, the title is How People Are Cursed by Sex Magic. I'm taking my time this morning to get this message out. I ask the Father, I ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and insight as we share this message to the body of Christ. Lord God, I pray that the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Lord will rest mightily upon this teaching. We come against all interruption. We come against strongholds that will try to bind us from bringing forth this insight and wisdom. And Father, we give you honor and we give you praise for who you are. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as I teach this mentoring class, I ask you to bless the students, bless those that are learning and getting insight from the teachings that we do. And uh, the original title of this message was How People Are Cursed by Sex Magic and Witchcraft Through Fornication and Sexual Immorality. Now, as I minister this message, amen, I know that it's going to be, it is a message that would be controversial, but I believe that believers need to understand this so when they pray for people, they can get them a breakthrough. I'm going to try to take my time and share this message. Now, to start with, why am I sharing this message? Well, the reason why I'm sharing it was a young man that was a Christian girl who had got into a relationship with a young man, and by the time she had called me for deliverance and counseling, she was having apparitions that looked like this young man appear to her after she broke up. Uh, now, the way that he got these spirits to attack her was uh, she, her, him and her got into sexual relationship. Now, it was a sin because she was not married to him. Now, I'm not appealing to those that don't believe that the gospel is true. I'm not going to be able to satisfy you with this teaching. But the young lady she slept with, after she slept with him and whatnot, sexual attacks begin to happen and these spirits begin to attack her. Now, what is sex magic? All right, now, here goes what sex magic is. And it's sometimes it's called, spells sex, M-A-G-I-C-K. Is any type of sexual activity used in magical rituals in order to keep a person under sexual control. I repeat it again. Sex magic is any spell or ritual used in order to keep a person under sexual control. Sex magic practitioners, sex magic practitioner one quoted this, and here goes what this sex magic pr practitioner quoted. He says, in my experience, sex magic doesn't just entail opening legs, but opening portals. Are you hearing this? In other words, he was saying, if when you can get this person, when you use these rituals and spells against that person, it also opens porters. Okay, so in this teaching, I'm going to go to the Bible and show you some of the things that the Lord has shown me. We prayed for and God gave the young lady breakthrough. Now, here goes something else that this person said. Check this out. Right at the bottom of the screen, it says it entails a few sly moves, mostly out of the body, mental, psychic, and sexual attacks. So what, when this girl came to me, the figure of that young man, a, an ethereal figure was in her bedroom, looked exactly like him. As I began to pray for her to get it broken, the Lord did magnificent breakthrough for her. But here goes the most of the unique thing. When she got her breakthrough, I started doing some research, and I started from the Bible itself. Amen. And the place in the Bible where a whole nation was brought under bondage through witchcraft and sexual uh, fornication was Balaam. And I'm going to go into the section of the Bible and show you what Scripture says about it. Now, we're going to go to here. Check this out. Now, Numbers chapter 23, verse 8. Balaam was not able to curse Israel. Balak had paid him money. He had paid him good money to curse Israel. But when he went out on the mountain and tried to pronounce a curse against Israel, here goes what it says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 8. How shall I curse whom God have not cursed? And how shall I defy whom the Lord have not defied? The key to getting Christians bound through these sexual rituals or anyone bound through sexual rituals is to get the person to participate. 
Balaam was not able to curse Israel because God had told him, you are going to bless them and you cannot curse them. And I will not allow it to happen. Look what it says in Numbers 23, 20. He says, behold, I have received commandment to bless and he have blessed and I cannot reverse it. So Balaam found himself in a quandary. He could not curse Israel. He wanted to get paid for the, for the sin of, of, of cursing Israel, but he could not curse him. God would not allow him to curse him. So therefore, I want to tell you, there is a measure of powerful protection in our lives when we stay in the word and will of God. But when you look at the scripture later, check this out. In verse 20, chapter 23, verse 21, here goes what he said. When I tried to curse them, here goes why I could not curse them. Number one, he, God, hath not, he have not beheld iniquity in Jacob. So he was not able to curse them because there was no iniquity in them. Neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The shout, the, the, the Lord his God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. Now, I broke this down because I think it's very powerful. When you break down what Balaam was actually saying in these verses, watch this. Now, check this up. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Here, number one, iniquity defined was there was not no vanity. There was no wickedness. Specifically, there wasn't even an idol in their life. He needed wickedness. He needed idolatry. He needed evil. He needed mischief and they could not curse them because Israel was not operating in either. Then he said, neither was there any perverseness in Israel. The word perverse is amal, which it means is grievousness, grievance, iniquity, trouble, weariness. Amen. N none of that was in his life. Amen. So that's why Balaam could not curse him. Also, this word perverseness means to turn away. Now watch this. He couldn't curse him because Israel did not turn away from that which is right or good. They were not corrupt and they were not operating improperly. The Lord, his God is with them. That's another thing. That means his God is with him. Israel knew who their God was and the shout of a king was among them. In other words, they walked in kingdom authority. And that was why Balaam could not curse Israel. So he had to come up with a way to afflict and bind them. And the way that he did it was he caused Israel to commit spiritual adultery, idolatry, and also got them to commit fornication. And that's how when he was able to curse Israel. When that happened, Israel came under a curse. And then I'm going to go to some other scriptures. Watch this here. The same method was used in Revelations chapter 2, verse 14. Uh, Revelations explains it much clearer. Listen what it says. Revelations 2, 14. For I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. And what was the doctrine of Balaam? Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. And the stumbling block that he used in order to use the witchcraft and the magic against them was to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Isn't it funny that most people that talk to me that have these spirits attack them, they also have these spirits feeding them in dreams, feeding them in visions. There is something equated to that. I always tell people that as demonic powers are trying to feed you anything in a dream, that you, you begin to break and come against that. If you wake up that next morning, when you wake up, you come against that in the name of the Lord and let them know there's the, the table that you dine at is the master's table. You have eaten of the communion of the body, the bread, and the blood of Christ. Not only that, my dear friend, the Bible says in the book of the 23rd Psalm, God prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Therefore, I refuse to accept any demonic power, any evil spirit trying to feed me that which was offered to idols. By the way, in the name of Jesus, I break every demonic curse, every demonic thing that was released in this dream where the spirit tried to feed me and I command its power to come to nothing. But look what it says. It caused them to eat things, sacrifice unto idols and to commit fornication. It was the combination of the two. 
idolatry and fornication. The modern day sex magic people operate in the same way. They get the person to commit fornication with them, and then they start tapping into their idolatry, their witchcraft, their perversion that is connected with spells and incantation. According to the Revelations 2.14, Balaam told King Balak how to get the Israelites to commit sin by enticing them with sexual immorality. I believe what happened to that young lady she was serving God. She took down for him. And, and listen, I, I'm not saying here that we are all so perfect that we have never, ever, ever, never, ever had the sin of fornicating. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. But this was a design thing. The whole, the, the heavenly host, and you, and I know that it is a sin, amen, to have sexual relationship outside of marriage. Well, I'm not going to fix it up for you. I'm not going to change it for you. The word of God calls it what it is, and that's exactly what it is. And in this chapter here, going back to it, uh, listen at this. According to Revelation 2.14, Balaam told King Balak how to get the Israelites to commit sin by enticing them with sexual immorality and food sacrificed to idols. The Israelites fell into transgression due to these traps, and God sent a deadly plague to them as a result of it. And that's in Numbers 31, verse 16. Now, what am I trying to say to you? Balaam had to get Israel in a place that they disobeyed their God. Not only did they disobey their God, it wasn't just God was hard up for them having a, a, a sexual encounter one night. But what they did was they had a sexual encounter. And that was physical, but spiritually they also opened themselves up sexually to through the idols to the idols that they worship. These this word idolatry is associated powerfully and strongly to demonic principalities, demonic spirits that a nation or a person is dealing with. Those that operate with sex magic communicate to certain spirits as you will see in the teaching as I go along. I'm going to give you the other notes that we have here. I'm going to get this message. I thank God. The basis of sex magic is to open the door through sexual sin and adultery to curse the victim. Sex magicians is the concept that energy is a potent force that can be harnessed and sent against a person. That girl could feel an energy, a force, that is sent against them. Check this out. Sex magic needs the cooperation of the victim for the demons to enter by consenting parties. They need the, these people cannot just throw the curse at them. Proverbs 26, 2 says a curse causeless shall not come. So just like Balaam had taught Balak to get Israel to compromise, when he got them to compromise, he was able then to bind them. I'll go back over it again. The basis of sex magic is to open the door through sexual sin and idolatry to curse the victim, to bind the person over to the one that wants to use them sexually and use the energy in their life. Now, check this out. God, we thank you for this message. And I thank you for, Lord, allowing me to get it out. Sex magic summons energy locked inside the body and uses orgasms as a vehicle to manifest it with or, or get with orgasmic vibrations and spells intensity the person gets locked their body gets locked with a soul tie to the individual that they don't even know is working witchcraft trying to bind them sexually to them to feed off of them like a psychic vampire. Now, I know this will offend some folk. I know the folks out there doing it don't want me to tell it, but let me share this to you. I had one time a young man tell me that he was in a hotel room one night and he, and he was in deep sleep. And when he began in, in this dream that he had, now I want you to hear this, this uh, incubus spirit, that attacked him in this dream. That demon had him at the point when he woke up, he was getting ready to release. I'm being nice. You know what I'm talking about. That demon wanted him to masturbate so he could use the semen for its strength to create the energy and the power from it. When that young man woke up, the demon was sitting on the edge of the bed. He looked at that manifestation. He felt it. He heard the spirit speaking. And when he refused, 
all of a sudden he woke up. It was like things were happening automatically outside of him doing it himself. He woke up, sat on the edge of the bed, and he began to repray and rebuke the demon. And the demon kept begging him, finish. And y'all know what I'm talking about when he said finish. That demon, while he was asleep, had him automatically going into the automatic mode, what we call auto masturbation. I'm going to move on past it. I don't said it. And when he woke up, he stopped. He said, what in the world am I doing? And when he woke up, he could hear that demon saying, finish Finish it, finish it. He rebuked that spirit in Jesus' name. Are you hearing me? And when he did, the Holy Spirit said to him, had you finished that manifestation, it would have given that de demon energy to operate in your life. Now, let me, let me get the other notes up that I've got here. I already shared with you. I was sharing right now. If, like I said, if he had done it, the spiritual attack would use the sexual energy to bury in deeper its attack. So once a demonic sexual night attack uh, uh, attacks you, that spirit is not just doing it for fun. It's doing it to make a strong connection so that it can take and sow its demonic seed, its demonic interest there, and it will feed off of the energy in your body. It will also connect you where spirits will keep coming back and forth sexually attacking. Witches cast spells through orgasms. There are people on the internet. This is not something I created. This is not some idea Ivory came up with. There are teachings on the internet that teach people how to use orgasms and cast spells from the energy of the sexual charge, what we would call stimulation. Stimulation can be activated and used as a power against a person. So witches cast spells through orgasm. Since time, since time immortal, witches have been harnessing their sexual energy to do magic. And here goes what I say to that. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break all demonic sexual spells and energy sent against me. That's what you want to say. In Jesus' name, I break all demonic sexual spells and energy sent against me. I bind and trap all astral bodies and people making attempts to attack me or harass me using sex magic and I cast those demons out in Jesus name. Because when they use sex magic against you, that is an astral body. In other words, it looks like someone has actually teleported in your room and they're harassing you. Sometimes they look like the person's figure, and then sometimes they look like demonic shadows and figures, but they go after you sexually. Now, if they come after you sexually and try to, and, 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 and you can feel them coming, but there are people that it, it becomes a demonic harassment. That doesn't mean you got a demon. That means you were actually attacked with a psychic attack, with a ethereal attack that was coming from something being released against you. Is you understanding what I'm saying? The why I had to teach this teaching is because constantly in my deliverance and counseling sessions, I am finding people who have been attacked in this manner. Now, uh, there was one guy that everybody all have heard of his name. Let me show you. And this guy, Alex de Crawley, the most notorious sex magic practitioner in recent history is Alex de Crawley a famous 19th century British occultist who viewed sex as the supreme magical power. Are you hearing me? Alistair Crowley often used sex magic in his witchcraft to allure and to attack people with it and also to gain energy from the other parties. One witch said, I find for me that sex magic works best when your intention has to do with sex Love, confidence, power, and strength. Now check this out. What it is saying. If that person trying to work that sex magic against you, against that young lady, he that he used sex, he tapped into love. Now this love here is that he's talking about is deceptive love that taps into a person's rejection. About 90% of godly people who surrender their bodies over to someone else in sexual sin, and this is not always the case. I'm going to say it again. This is not always the case. They are convinced to get into that position because they love the person. They are rejected. They are lonely. And they feel like if I don't do what they want me to do, I'll lose them. 
So the person with, uh, with, uh, with evil intentions actually uses love. They give them confidence. They give them power and strength. And that's the way that they use it to attack that person. In other words, we did in deliverance just simply would tell you they use the spirit of rejection and insecurity and make you feel like you must surrender. Now, there is a technique that they use. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to pronounce the word. I'll probably hack it up. But, but I got things right here. Techniques involve repeating mantras. So those that are working these things does it by repeating certain mantras and certain words during or orgasms, focusing on the cigar. The cigar is a magical symbol to help focus your energy and invoking certain deities. Hather, Isis, and Aphrodite are common goddesses that they provoke. So they provoke demons. They literally provoke demons. Uh, a cigar or cigar is a type of symbol used in magic. In modern uses, especially in the context of chaos magic. You hear that? Chaos magic. Ca chaos magic. Cigar refers to a symbolic representation of the practitioner's desired outcome. That young lady saw pictures on that boy's wall. Those pictures on that wall were related to lust. And by the way, by me being a teacher who's prayed for thousands of people that have been attacked by voodoo, these images that I'm, that in this cigar looks the same as voodoo images that are used in voodoo. So it, so I'm, I'm giving this information to you as believers for you to understand that in the name of Jesus, I break every image everything they're using to cast that spell against me i break it in jesus name that's the way you want to have to come at that thing break the power of, of the sender and also of the object that the sender is using glory be to god and i trust i'm not talking too fast this was fault this message that i'm preaching right now was kicked off of a live video when i tried to teach it the second time i tried to teach this message it was actually kicked off a radio broadcast we had pure demonic interference now i'm gonna go on and move to the next subject check this frame out jezebel in the book of Revelations was a witch that used seduction she used the same formula that balaam used I'm going to say it again. She used the same formula that Balaam used. Many times we that are born again have to understand God automatically. Let me move this out the way as I say this. Many times in the Bible, the example of what the people in witchcraft and doing evil is in the Bible, what God says to judge it. So therefore, when you see these things, I love it that the word of God says there is nothing new under the sun. I maintain to tell you such magic getting people cursed and bound by sex magic was used even in the old testament now let me get my frame back up praise god jezebel in revelation was a witch using seduction revelations chapter 2 verse 20 says notwithstanding i have a few things against you because you suffered that woman jezebel which called herself a prophetess now check this out she called herself a prophetess and to teach and to seduce my servants. And what she went after was God's servants. There are many people out there that go after God's men and women. I believe that, that uh, Delilah tapped into the lust that was in Samson. Samson did not fulfill much in his destiny because that spirit of seduction, they knew, even the Philistines knew, all we need to do to bind Samson up, all we need to do to destroy Samson is to get him to operate on that, that gap in his life called lust, called self-will. Samson was both self-willed, and he also was loaded with lust. And that was the way that he was able to be cursed. Now, let me go back on my notes here. Jezebel used Balaam's method to curse that church in Revelations. Sexual immorality and idolatry. The victim is blind to what's being sent after them. By forming soul ties to control and manipulate a person, that's how they blind them. They may not even understand what's even happening at first. Like the church of Tyra Tyra saying, you allow the false prophet 
or leader to use you sexually. How many women of God, how many men of God have I ministered to who came under seduction and control through leaders, preachers, warlocks, and those that are working witchcraft? Do you not know there are people in this world who go out and seek the root doctors and the conjure men and those that work in those dark arts that go out to seek them so that they can curse somebody. Amen. Are you hearing me? But the spirit of God, the God's truth and God's word is forever settled in the heaven. He is not going to allow the enemy to get away with this mess. God is on our side. The anointing of God, the presence of God is on our side. And what we have to understand, glory be to God, that by his grace, and by his power, we have power over all the power of the enemy. I'm trying to go on, move on with some other sections of this teaching. Let me get my die. We go. Now, the next frame that I'm going to open up, amen. Hallelujah. Check this out. The basis of sex magic is to open the door through sexual sin, adultery, to curse them. Sex magic is the concept that the sexual energy a potent force that can be harnessed and sent after the person. That's it. They believe that this energy can be sent against a person and they have accomplished it in many people's lives. As I prayed for that young lady, as I began to take authority over those demonic strongholds, glory be to God, there were certain symptoms that was operating in her life. Here they go. The symptoms are mental control by the person they submitted to. That's right, the person that they slept with, that they got to take down, they, they end up having a demonic power that seems like that person has control over them. Emotional attachment over ruling their will. I'm going to say it again. Emotional attachment over ruling their will. Also, sleep and dream attacks coming from them. Figures that look like them appear or shadow figures sexually attacking them. Like Samson, they have a loss of common sense. Others see you're being deceived and you can't until you're trapped. Like Israel, you lose spiritual dedication to God. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from the bottom up again. Losing, like Israel, you lose spiritual dedication to God. You can tell, one of the, tell a tree by its fruit. Have you ever got connected with someone that you took down, got into fornication, got into sin, got into idolatry, got into moving around in the occult stuff, just borderlining it, never realizing that once you got attached to that particular person, once that particular person came in your life, you lost your prayer life. You lost your anointing. You cannot prophesy like you used to. You cannot preach. Why? Because through that demonic connection that used Sex and idol tree, they bound and blocked you from being able to yield to the gifts. Others see that you're being deceived and you can't until you're trapped. Samson lost his common sense. I mean, three times Delilah asked him where his great strength lies. Three times Samson was attacked and any fool should have realized, wait a minute, I told this girl this and they came on me. Wait a minute, that's one time, maybe that's a coincidence. Wait a minute, I told this girl this and they came at me a second time. You mean Samson three times? You're out, brother. And that's exactly what the enemy did. Also, the young lady told me that she was having shadowy figures attack her sexually. Things that looked like they were dark shadows, but she could feel the force of them on her body. Sometimes the force of them would go after her sexually, and when she tried to move her body to fight, her body seemed like it was paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, you break those demonic predatory spirits that have been released through witchcraft, incantations, and spells, and command them to loose you now in Jesus' name. Also, the figures often look like the person. I've told y'all before of a young lady that came to my church in Delaware, and she told me that a figure that looked like a particular minister who had told her he would take care of her needs sexually and he ain't got to come to the house to do it. And what happened when she came to me, she started telling me about it and God allowed me to carry her through deliverance and I broke demons and evil soul ties between her and that preacher. I was young in the Lord then. I had never heard of this, but I was reading a book by a, a doc, uh, preacher, a deliverance preacher by the name of Dr. Kurt Koch. Dr. Kurt Koch was from Germany. 
And he, he wrote a book called Between Christ and Satan. Also, he writes, uh, writes on deliverance and occult uh, counseling. He is saved. He writes against the enemy. In his book, he shared how a young lady had gotten into an affair with this particular preacher. She sinned. She got into and he seduced her. And this young lady said she wanted to get away from him and stop it. Because, and so what she did, she moved it to another area. But when she moved to another area, at night from time to time, an apparition, an ethereal figure, a figure that looked like he astral projected in her bedroom, and it would attack her sexually. And when she got with Dr. Kirk Koch, he broke the spell that was over her, he cast the demon out, and God set her her free. How many of y'all now are seeing why I had so much a battle when I was trying to get this message out? Because the demons fought me on two different broadcasts to stop me from getting this message out. Now here goes some other notes related. Thank God for the flow. Prayers against sexual attacks. Number one, I'm going to take my time on this. Number one, in the name of Jesus, I break spirits of sexual witchcraft coming against me. I repent of my involvement in Jesus' name. You have to repent of your involvement with it. Don't hide it. Don't pretend it didn't happen. It is what it is. Repent of the sin of sexual adultery, fornication, idolatry. Repent of the sin and ask the Father to break any soul tie with you and that person or else they will reactivate these things and attack. Also, number two, I command any open doors by me or my family line. Sometimes these attacks are made con making contact through stuff that is in your family line. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes the reason why these curses have an effect because they tap into the bondage that is in your family line. I'm going to say something to you. When I was 15 years old, I moved from Maryland to Delaware. I'd never in my life ever heard of witchcraft when I was in Merlin. Now, I ain't saying nobody wasn't doing it. I'm saying as a kid at 15, I'd never heard of it. When I got here to Delaware, I had met many people who would put roots on a woman to control her. I thought that was crazy because if I got to put witchcraft on you for you to have me, guess what? Next. But these people operated that way. And it was a common cultural attitude. And I'm going to say this. Now, don't get mad with me. But it was a common cultural attitude with witchcraft to those that believe it. In the black culture, there were some that do it. Now, some of these young people today, they're using other forms of witchcraft. But back in the day, they would go see people to root or control a mate or a person, that they, a girlfriend or a man that they wanted. And so anyway... And that's why I said in number two, I command any open doors by me or my family line to be shut by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Number three, I bind all astral, astral and sexual projections sent against me. And I ask the father to shut them down. Any astral bodies being sent against me, father, lock them down. Put them on lockdown in Jesus name. Number four, I counsel all spells and incantations being sent against me, and I command them to be broken in Jesus' name. Five, any images and shadowy figures attacking me in my dream, I ask the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to drive them out and dismantle their purpose in Jesus' name. Also, number six, any fluids taken from my body during sex used against me, I ask the Father to destroy its purpose and power. Any fluids. Because remember, these people, I'm going to say it to you and I, once again, remember, these people are taught to use orgasms as a vehicle and tool to draw energy from a person, to draw force from them and control that person in that manner. This here, I didn't write it. I didn't create this. I, I, when I begin to look on, on the internet, when I begin to deal with numbers of people who've been attacked like this, I wanted the Holy Spirit to show me why. And this was why. Some of the people, that young lady that called me for that deliverance session had sex magic that was working against her. And that young man was knew what he was doing and was sending psychic energy, astral body in there, and God broke that mess up. Let me go on a little bit further. I command sexual energy sent against me and draining me 
from me and in Jesus' name, by any spirit, I break it. I ask the Father to counsel its purpose now in Jesus' name. That's right, number seven. I command sexual energy sent against me and draining, draining me by, by any spirit. I ask the Father to break his power. I break every covenant and agreement made with any sexual partner that is using witchcraft against me. Because what these things, spirits do is they make covenants with you. They get you to come in agreement. They woo you with their passion. They woo you with their words, knowing, knowing all along that they want to control you for sexual gratification. They don't care about you. They care about having you around to take care of their sexual needs and feed off of that energy. Also, anyone calling spirits against me using rituals, altars, or seduction, I loose myself from its power in the name of Jesus. Next one. Any sex acts that connects me to them, I ask the Father to break the evil attachment. I told some of you how when I was in Los Angeles, praying for a young lady with a number of the other sisters that were trying to cast the demons out of her. She said that the stronghold in her life had her to the point where in she was married to her husband, but their intimacy was interrupted by something that made no sense. As the ladies were praying with her in the mass deliverance that we had, I walked over to them and I said, how are y'all doing? And they said, Apostle, this one does not seem to be moving. I got down on one knee beside the young lady with the other women. And the Holy Spirit said, whisper in her ear what I'm going to tell you. And the Holy Spirit told me to tell, whisper in her ear that the thing that that young man did to you and said, now it's mine. And he was talking about her sex organ. He did an act to her and said, it's mine. And nobody else will be pleased by you. It's mine. I command that to be broken. When I did that, command that to loose her and let her go. Because she had come to the Lord to be delivered. For the word of God declares, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I commanded the covenant and the words that were spoken, the words that were released. And he released those words in her ear while having sex with her. She never realized that he was actually doing what we call sex magic, pronouncing what he wanted of her body, controlling her body part. And when we broke that thing, the attack that was against her and her husband's intimacy was loosed to God be the glory. This is not, and I'm not crazy with what I'm saying, folks. So I asked the father in number 15, any sex act that connects me to them, I asked the father to break it, every evil attachment. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I command spiritual attacks and presences to stop coming at me in Jesus' name. That's right. Take your authority. Command them to stop. Command their power to be broken in the name of the Lord God. My dear friend, I trust that you have been blessed by this little bit of insight that I've given to you. God is a deliverer. As I'm getting ready to close, I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that, Lord God, you break these demonic powers that have been released against your people. Lord God, you said in Ezekiel 13, 17 through 21, that you will tear your people from out of their arms, and you will release the souls that should not, should not be bound. Lord God, because you are the Lord our God, in the name of Jesus, every evil coven, every evil spirit that is operating and trying to be sent against anyone that would expose them. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, that every arrow fall to the ground. Lord God, every pit they dig, let them fall in it themselves. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you right now by the power of the blood, Lord God, cut off the astral projecting into our, the, our presences. Cut off these demonic powers holding God's people down, trying to have sex. Lord God, we break the very deity. We break the very demonic name that's being called upon, and we come against it in the name of Jesus. We we break in the name of Jesus predatory spirits. We break marine spirits. We break those spirits of pain which operates through lust and perversion. We break the power of them now in the name of Jesus. For we are entitled and we are want to serve the Lord and we have the right and the, and the privilege to walk in sexual freedom and not be bound by demonic powers attacking us at night. In the name of Jesus God we give you praise, glory, and honor. And Lord God I command
command those spirits to come out now. I command those spirits right now in the name of Jesus Christ and those that are sending them. I ask the Father to save, deliver them, or judge them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I command in Jesus' name, I command spirit marriages, which are not marriages at all. They're making dedications to someone, calling them your soulmate, but they won't marry you. They won't serve God. I break the power of those spirits. I ask the Lord to lift the spirits of deception. Lord God, those that are using sex magic and rituals, those that are using the energy from their body to ask to use the ethereal parts of the body, I break that now in Jesus' name. Lord God, I may not know everything about this, but I know one thing, who is the creator and Lord of Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break their power and I command the Boshaturundi the Bosia. I command every spirit that has been operating against us in this way. I break them down in Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. God bless you. You've been listening to Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Glory be to God. Go to our website at pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. Amen. And on our website, we have books that we have written. On our website, there is uh, there is a section where you can sign up, amen, that, uh, that where you can, where a person can, uh, if you need deliverance and counseling, it tells you how to get it. Glory be to God. Uh, I praise God. So I ask the Lord to just bless you. I ask the Lord to encourage you. And we will talk to you. And the name of our website is pilgrimsministry.org. That pilgrims, that's, and once again, it's pilgrimsministry.org. Well, people, I'll tell you like I usually do, I'll catch you all in another teaching. God bless you and may 